Good morning. Today is Palm Sunday, the day when, according to the Gospels, Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem and was hailed the Messiah by the Jewish crowd. Today, there are still Jews who believe that Jesus is the promised Messiah. Messianic Jews, as they're known, see it as their mission to deliver the Christian message to other Jews, which causes tremendous anger and resentment among Orthodox Jews in particular. In a moment, I want to hear from those who object to their activities, but first I'd like to speak to one leading Messianic Jew in this country, Richard Harvey of Jews for Jesus. Richard Harvey, first of all, when did you become a Christian? About 20 years ago. Uh, I grew up in a Jewish home where we went to synagogue, kept the Jewish festivals, and I was very conscious of my tradition and my identity as a Jew, my family originally from Germany, Holocaust survivors. But as I was growing up, I, I never saw the reality of God. And I began searching for God, for truth. I was into various things. It was the 60s and early 70s. And uh, I had two friends who were Christians. And I started to try and prove them wrong. And over a period of three years of arguing and discussing with them, I came to the conclusion that actually there was something in what they believed. The more I looked at the evidence for Jesus, the more I saw that it was quite likely true. And then I had an experience, you could call it a vision if you like, of they asked me, what do you think happened uh, at Calvary at Easter? Did Jesus rise from the dead? Was the tomb empty? And I, it was like looking back 2,000 years in history, and I saw an empty tomb. And I realized that Jesus had risen from the dead. And I said to them at the time, well, perhaps you're right. Perhaps Jesus did rise from the dead. But anyway, I'm Jewish, and, and we're not supposed to believe that. And so I had a problem in my mind. Was I going to accept what my tradition told me, which is that Jews are not supposed to believe in Jesus, or was I going to follow the truth that I saw, which was that Jesus truly was the risen Messiah? So are you now Christian and Jewish, or just Christian and not Jewish? I'm both. I'm fully Jewish in that my family are Jewish, and I'm a Jew who has come to believe in the greatest Jew who ever lived, Jesus, as the Messiah. And I'm fully Christian in the sense that I'm a follower of the Christos, which is just the Greek word for a follower of the Messiah. How did your family react? when you became Yeah, well, I, I was surprised by their reaction because some of my friends had actually been thrown out of their homes for coming to believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I said to my father, well, Dad, I actually believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, and he said, oh, that's funny, so do I. And he too, even though he was one of the leaders of our local synagogue and had been uh, sending us to religion school to, to get a Jewish education, he too was not able to find a spiritual reality in the synagogue. And he began searching too. He became a Christian, a Messianic Jew, about the same time as me. So did my brother and my grandfather. But it must mean that Judaism alone for you then was not enough. Well, Judaism is a wonderful religion, but the best thing about Judaism is yet to come for most Jewish people, and that is the Messiah. Jesus, if he is the Messiah, as I believe he is, he's the missing key to not just Judaism, but all Jewish identity. Most Jewish people today are not strongly religious, but they know that they're part of that covenant people of God, if you like, through the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So if you're a Christian and a Jew, I mean, which services do you attend? Do you go to synagogue or do you go to Christian church? Well, you get the best of both worlds, but I've been uh, involved now for a number of years with a growing number of Messianic Jews, and Messianic Jews have their own synagogues, which are fully Jewish and fully Christian. So we keep the Jewish festivals. After all, Jesus celebrated them every year of his life, and they point to Jesus being the fulfillment of all that the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament looks forward to. And I also am very happy to be part of the whole church because at the end of the day, Christianity is, is the fulfillment of biblical Judaism. So do you feel at home with, say, the prayers and rituals of Christianity? Well, yes. It's not part of my culture originally. My culture was saying the Shema and it was going to uh, services in Hebrew in synagogue. But what I found is the good news that Jesus is not just the Messiah for Jewish people. You don't even have to be Jew Jewish to believe in him. And the church is, is made up of everyone. Rabbi Shmuley Boteak from the Lachaim Society, which is an Orthodox Jewish society, do you have a problem with Richard? With I have no do? problem with Richard. I have a problem with Richard, Richard's activities. Richard has a right to believe in anything he wishes. But the moment he begins to prey on vulnerable and uneducated Jews, people like himself who weren't afforded the benefit of a Jewish education, who are therefore susceptible to Christian missionary claims, uh, I do have a problem with that. On the contrary, Jews should find meaning within their own tradition. Um, let's just remember that Jews for Jesus is an oxymoron. It's like Hindus for Buddha. It's like Muslims for Christ. Anyone from any tradition would be offended by labels such as those. Um, 
Christianity and Islam for a Jew represent valid ways by which a man or woman can draw close to God and achieve salvation, absolutely. What we must do is create a tolerant society, not just physically where we abandon racism, but a tolerant society where different faiths ex accept and respect each other. But if we want now, a tolerant society, why can't you be tolerant of Richard Harvey, who's a Jew who believes that I have Jesus no problem Christ Richard is Harvey the Messiah? Can believe whatever he wants. Richard Harvey has a problem with me. He's preying on my people, believing that we're going to the eternal barbecue, that our religion doesn't lead to salvation. He said that our religion's missing an essential component in Jesus. He thinks that we're deficient. We have no problem with Richard Harvey whatsoever. Let him not prey on our students. Let him not prey on our vulnerable old people, people who are bereaved, which is the kind of people they target specifically. They look for people who are going through emotional crisis and an identity crisis. And I find that very, I find that deplorable. Remember, it's not for the Jews to refute Christian missionary claims that Jesus was the Messiah. It's on the Christians to prove to us that he was, because the Messiah was supposed to accomplish certain things. He was supposed to bring about world peace. There's no world peace. He was supposed to bring about resurrection of the dead, not just one empty tomb, but millions of empty tombs. That hasn't happened. He was supposed to bring about an end to conflict, an end to contention, an end to jealousy. These things are rife within society. And if Richard Harvey says to me, Jesus will one day do that, I'll wait. Well, if Richard Harvey is just following his beliefs, what's wrong with that? What well, he believes is correct. Well, you would probably agree with me that if a white racist supremacist from the South in the United States was following his KKK beliefs and believing that blacks are inferior to whites, we would all find it objectionable. The same is true with spiritual Nazism, where you believe that your religion is superior to another, where you believe that others who don't accept your road to salvation are going to perish in an eternal inferno from which they could never be redeemed. I find that objectionable. It has served as the principal source of anti-Semitism throughout the ages. The belief that Jews are going to burn eternally because they've rejected their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ was traditionally used as the, as the rationale for burning Jews in auto de fe's. Better, you know, give them 45 minutes of burning hair than an eternity in, in the hereafter. So let's remember, these are not just beliefs. They are be Christian anti-Judaism over 2,000 years has led to racial anti-Semitism. I find it deplorable. I find it saddened. I find it nauseating, to be honest, that we live at the end of the 20th century, after a century that has witnessed so much violence against Jews, and we have people from within our own community who are preaching to other Jews that they are never going to be saved, and there's only one way to achieve it. What about Muslims, good, honest Muslims, who believe in, in, in the prophecy of Muhammad? What about good Jews who believe in the Mosaic tradition? Okay. Why does Richard Harvey have a problem with us? We, we love bring Christians, Reverend and Paul we want Robert them to, to achieve salvation their way. Paul Roberts, you're an Anglican. Do you believe that, as the rabbi said, it's spiritual Nazism on the part of Richard Harvey to be for Jews for Jesus? I think that's very strong language for what's actually going on. He used the same language, actually, about a, a recent meeting in Oxford, where students invited fellow students to a meeting, analysing the question, was Jesus the Jewish Messiah? And let's be clear about what went on there. People were simply invited to a meeting. But he felt you were trying to proselytise to the yes, young Jewish students. You felt what you mean by that, that do, No, I don't want to bring you in yet. Yes, just they were presenting a point of view. As a Christian, you see, I believe Jesus was the Son of God, that in him is found forgiveness forever, that he rose from the dead. Now, I happen to believe that, and I think it's the most wonderful news for the whole world. Now, I'm not forcing anyone to believe it, but it would be very strange for me believing what I do if I didn't actually bother to tell other people about it. But why don't now, you leave other religions alone? That would be the well, rabbi's point. Jesus is either true or he isn't. Now, it's up to individuals to believe that or reject it. I would be concerned with the rabbi if there was any suggestion that there was undue pressure being put on people, that they weren't allowed to, to analyse and think for themselves. I would have thought, for instance, at Oxford University, where a recent row came up, of all places, people should be intelligent enough to come to their own point of view. And we don't want to mollycoddle them and prevent them from listening to something that differs from their tradition. Andrew White, you're a reverend and you're involved in the Council for Christians and Jews. Why do you believe the rabbi gets so agitated? Do you think he should get so agitated or get worried? In many ways, I do think he's got a case. Christians have failed to understand so much of the pain and suffering that the Jewish people have actually suffered at the hands of Christians over 2,000 years. And I think particularly in this post-Holocaust age where in almost our generation, six million people have been systematically murdered, not as a Christian project, but certainly uh, the Holocaust could not have happened if it wasn't for the Christian environment, if it wasn't for the teaching of the church, which taught that the Jews were finished with, that the church was the new Israel, that everything which previously applied to the Jews now applies to so the church. So do you believe, sorry for getting across you, that it is not your role to proselytize to Jews? What, I, what I'm saying is that Christians must first 
understand the sufferings of the Jewish people. But should they try to convert you? I'd be very hesitant to recommend that Christians went around trying to convert Jews. I think, first of all, we've got to actually understand something of our faith in Judaism. I think Christians have got a lot to pay back to the Jews. Christians owe an incredible amount to the Jews for their own faith, for their own salvation. I would say, as a Christian, I share in the faith of the people of Israel, and I share in the salvation of the people of Israel, though I would say I share that by Jesus. What about no one comes through the Father but through me? A, a very p profound statement. And I would say that Jesus speaking as the Word come flesh, become flesh amongst us, is saying that the Word of God is the means of salvation. Now, some theologians have said that Jesus is saying that he is the Torah made flesh come well amongst us. So he's saying that the Torah is the root of salvation. Now, I'm not saying I agree with that, but there are Christians who would actually believe that Judaism is a valid means of salvation, that Christians share in that, and therefore would not um, So just before we move on, so are you saying you don't believe that Jesus intended to found a new religion? No, I don't believe Jesus did intend to find I think very little evidence in the New Testament to say that he was about finding a new religion. And in that way, I can agree with Richard when he says he is actually Jewish. Vaughan, do you agree with your fellow Anglican? I agree that Jesus didn't come to found a new religion. He came to fulfill what he saw in the Hebrew Scriptures, our Christian's Old Testament. And that was good news that broke through the boundaries of Judaism and that brought good news for the whole world. So to that extent, I do agree with Andrew. But it's still good news for everyone. This is the staggering thing for Jews and Gentiles. Of course, the surprise then was it was good news for Gentiles. But now is Judaism a valid means of salvation? Jesus Christ is the way to God. But is Judaism? I'd point people to Jesus Christ. And G Judaism, of course, the Hebrew Scriptures do point people, I believe, from my perspective, to Jesus the Messiah. But do you believe the Jews are the chosen people? I believe that uh, God had a special plan for the Jews and still to convert to very Christianity. Much for them. That was a special plan, ultimately. Vaughn, I, I am, you know, I'm sorry, but I find your worldview incredibly shallow and quite disturbing. Um, we are at the age, we're in a new age in which people believe not just in tolerance, but in a multi-racial society where races actually are enriched <coughs> by exposure to one another. You have a very shallow view where there's only one truth, that being white is the only way, being male is the only way, perhaps, being Christian is the only way. Uh, Aren't we at an age in which we recognize there's more than one path to truth, that people can fulfill both their spiritual and their physical potential in different ways? Why are you such an exclusivist? Don't you realize that this belief has led to such horrors throughout the centuries because people believe that I have the truth and you don't? Don't you, aren't, doesn't your conscience pang you at times that you have this belief that Jews are all wrong? But are you so man. sure that he wasn't <clears throat> the Messiah? How are you so sure? Firstly, as I said, it's not for Jews to refute the Messiahship of Jesus. It's for Christians to prove it. The fact is that Jesus did not fulfill any of the Messianic prophecies. That has nothing to do with the fact, and this is not part of the discussion, that I respect Christianity as an absolutely valid means by which people can approach God. And Maimonides, our greatest theologian, wrote 900 years ago in an age of, of a spiritual uh, holocaust where Jews were being persecuted, mm. that Christians have taught the entire world about God, and he applauded their achievement. We love Christians. I believe that Jews, Christians, and Muslims must band together to create a society where religion becomes relevant. Instead, we're here fighting each other yeah. instead, of, instead of fighting secularism, which is the real enemy, where people are embracing mana and embracing money okay. rather you're than embracing God. You're misrepresenting what Christianity says, and you really haven't paid enough attention to what the message of, of Jesus is. Firstly, we are not saying that uh, you have to be Jewish to believe in Jesus. We're saying that Jesus is for everybody. Now, that is going against your Gnostic form of inclusivism, of saying that everybody has their own truth. It's really double standards when you say that it's all right for Christians to believe in Jesus, but it's not all right for Jews. And it's also false logic to say that Jesus can be the Messiah for Christians, but he didn't fulfill the Messianic prophecies. I don't right? understand another what you're saying at all. Another misrepresentation is to accuse me of spiritual Nazism. That is an extremely rude and aggressive insult. My family lost some of their don't lives. Don't get indignant. Can I Respond intelligently point? to it. Don't point? get indignant, Can I finish though. my point, please? My family lost some of their lives in the 
Holocaust. And I don't for a moment think that I'm continuing with anything like that. What I've done is I'm simply a nice Jewish boy who's found that Jesus is the Messiah. And who believes that and the rest I of your people are wrong. stop the emotional blackmail of saying that you cannot be Jewish and believe in Jesus for good reason. Because it is denigrating to your own profession as a rabbi not to respect the intellectual integrity of others. That's a point I'd want to draw in on, on your chart of intolerance. I think it's a very important word, tolerance. I think tolerance is vitally important in a pluralistic society. We must accept the right of other people to believe things different from what we believe. And I do respect the right of Jews and Muslims and others to believe things different from me. But they're wrong. But it, that's my point of view. <laughs> but we can surely <laughs> debate... How could you call that question. tolerance? <laughs> well, the question is, is there, are we getting rid of any concept of absolutes? Because if we are, then... Uh, and that's God is the absolute. Up. God is the answer. God is the answer. But he's revealed himself the Messiah. in Jesus. I think, I think we have to accept that Judaism is fairly unique in respect that it, it is not a missionary religion. It's not about proselytizing. It's not about encouraging other people to believe that Judaism is the only way of salvation. Now, Islam and Christianity both have more exclusive claims. I think what particularly worries me is a stance which I think Vaughan may have been holding to. That is, that the church is indeed the new Israel that the people of Israel are no longer the cho chosen people. I do not think we as Christians can continue to say that God's plan for Israel isn't everlasting, which brings us back to the question of the very nature of salvation and the nature of covenant. Didn't Jesus tell the disciples to spread the good news? He, he certainly did tell the disciples to spread the good news, and they were all Jewish. And they continue to be Jewish today. So why, how can you complain when we're saying you can be fully Jewish and fully Christian? It seems to me the position of the Council of Christians and Jews, which has refused me membership and expelled several of my Messianic Jewish friends, is let's keep Christians here and Jews here and you're trying to just solve the problem by keeping a pluralist and a relativist view of truth which is there's no absolute truth there is no uniqueness in Jesus. I, I personally have no problem with accepting you as a Jew and as a Christian. So you'd let me join having refused my membership uh, I, application? It is not for me to decide who can be a member and who can't be a member of the Council of Christians and Jews but what the Council of Christians and Jews has said is that aggressive proselytism is always wrong. But, but that's just and we have tried to encourage them. Richard, Richard, you see, this is, this is from what we being aggressive in their missionary yeah. activity this is what and we, to encourage it's Christians a standard to accusation. try and understand something of Judaism. Richard, this, this is what we objected to. I was, when I first became a believer in Jesus some 20 years ago, I was ignored. Rabbis told me to my face, I didn't exist, you couldn't believe in Jesus. I discovered that the more I studied the history of the early church, the more I saw how Jewish it was to accept Jesus as the greatest rabbi who ever lived. Then they got to the stage of throwing the book at me, which means, okay, you exist, but we're going to accuse you of all the wrong motives and all the wrong methods we possibly can. They will do anything to avoid looking at the real message that we're trying to communicate. That's exactly what we had. Richard, 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 I'd love to go through these prophecies with you and say, let's go through them point by point. Richard, with all due respect, you've done a lot of talking about yourself, and this program isn't just about your own personal journey. Maybe we'll have a whole program dedicated to you. Let's just talk about the truth, okay, for a moment? We're not discussing your personal journey. I said ten times, do whatever you want. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Okay? It so clearly let's does stop, bother stop you, Rabbi. No, 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 no. A lot. No. no, I said several times, and I will repeat. What bothers me is that he targets my people because he believes that the Judaism he rejected is insufficient, it's deficient, it's wrong, and ultimately it leads Jews to burn eternally for having wrong with Why do you care so much? Because he comes after our people. He comes after vulnerable people who don't have the answers. He preys on vulnerable people who are going through emotional crises. Just one moment. Vaughn said a blatant untruth on this program. What happened in Oxford was not that a, an activity was done to bring students to Jesus. An activity was done targeting Jews. Secret memos marked secret and confidential were passed around. They were intercepted. You're they were just published. The, just a moment. You're the author, paranoid. The authors, paranoid. just a moment, please. The authors of those memos never denied them. Nick Howard, who authored the memo, told all the national press, the Independent, the Telegraph, the Jews, quote, are the priority in our evangel e evangelism. Now, what if the Labour government today would say that we're going to make the blacks, the pri black people, the priority in our Can morality campaign? Question, people what would if, call that racism. What if now, Vaughn, wait, why did you mis misrepresent that? Paranoid. Why don't you say proudly uh, that kosher food was served there, Jewish students were targeted, and the okay, memo said answer, that this... Rabbi, I, 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 answer. Answer. I wasn't misrepresenting it at all, and I'm quite happy to say I wasn't involved in that meeting, but it certainly was a meeting which addressed the key question, was Jesus the Jewish Messiah? And clearly, 
that's a, a particular question for Jewish students. Now, the Christian is Union... Is it? Why is well, that? Because... That's the whole point. Well, let, Why let me, let me answer, for Jewish let, students? Let me answer. Because the, 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 we rejected it. Let me answer. The Christian Union... We didn't reject it. ...lays you different think. meetings on for different people, because different people have different questions... Was there an evening for the Muslims? Christian that is not true. So, Another instance, misrepresentation. No, 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 there has never been an evening for Muslims or Hindus. Okay, let For instance, scientists have particular objections sometimes to Christian faith. They often, it's often said Christianity and science are irreconcilable, so we lay on a meeting addressing that particular... But the height of insensitivity. The 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 scientists were not burned at the stake for 2,000 years for rejecting Christ. I reject your analogy okay, completely. Let me ask him one you thing, are not Rabbi. a student of history. Rabbi, let me ask one thing. In the context of bi bridge building, do you think it is counterproductive and insensitive, perhaps, to look like you are obviously proselytizing to young Jewish students? I Can you see how that might so. be misinterpreted? I have to say that uh, it was a very low-key meeting put on by two very gentle students who simply invited people to, to come well, along. What was their if intention? anyone's breaking bridges here, it's been the extreme reaction. Secret and confidential. Okay, okay. I, I think watching what is, language. It, what's in absolute evidence here is that the majority of Christendom, the majority of Christians do not understand the intensity of the pain mm. that's felt by the Jewish community. They do not understand that the Jewish community is still under threat. They do not understand the extent of Christian proselytism over the years, which has in, resulted in forced conversions, forced baptisms, enforced sermons. Now, I've all, I'd be all in favor of people having free liberty to speak whatever they wish to speak, but it must be done sensitively. And you get far further by actually sitting down and listening to each other and actually discussing in a cordial way what we actually believe and actually saying, I might learn from you as well. Now, have you ever sat down in the Christian Union or within your church and said, right, let's invite some of our Jewish students along, some of our colleagues, and let's sit down and see what we can learn from them about Faith, practice, I, I, I agree with problem. Andrew here. I agree with Andrew. I think it's vital we talk with one another. And clearly, I've got a lot but to learn. But you do that. Well, I have, have personally. Have you ever been I've involved spent, in a forum uh, where you'd sit down and listen to a Jew? I spent three months in Israel and spent a lot of time speaking with those with Jewish faith and learned a lot from them. There's a huge amount to admire within Judaism, and I hope that we mustn't get the wrong impression here. Huge amount to admire. But why aren't you happy just being an Anglican with your Anglicans? Flock. Why are you looking to take some Jews from Rabbi Shmuley? Well, I want to underline, it's not Jews just Jews, Jews, but I happen to believe Jesus is good news. He's changed my life upside down. I, in him I have forgiveness, oh, I, I have tremendous... You know, I'm an American living Jesus here in Britain. Is. Let's say I love the idea of democracy, and I don't believe in a monarchy. Would it be proper for me to come to this country and be a guest in this country and tell everybody that monarchy is wrong, it should be abolished because I come from a different tradition? You have every right to say, say so. Perfect right. But Perfect you mustn't right. deny the right of freedom I of speech. I think by doing that, people here, do, people here... What you're trying to do is take me, away freedom of speech. Let him finish for a second. He hasn't spoken for All we're doing, and, and I think I'm on the same side of Vaughan here, is saying we found the greatest truth that anybody can find, that Jesus is the Messiah. As far as you everybody. are concerned, the rabbi clearly doesn't agree. Well, he's entitled to disagree, but when it comes to accusing us of all these bogus methods and, and emotionally saying you're using all these terrible tactics. All we're asking for is the freedom of speech to share with everyone who's willing to hear that Jesus is the fulfillment of all that the Hebrew well, Scriptures are. Why can't you be happy for. with your conversion? Why do you need to spread the word so much? Well, why I'm not you converted, just... I'm completed. I, I prefer to use the term because the best news that the Jewish faith has to give is that the Messiah has come. So you're right and, and we're that wrong. Is, That's what it comes down to. And you're you, going to tell you us how wrong we are. <coughs> Can I ask you one question, please? Will you just ask me Let him ask yeah? a question. Do you believe that the six million Jews of the Holocaust who were not baptized, who didn't believe in Jesus, who were not Christian, do you believe that they today are in heaven? I wouldn't presume to judge, but let me tell you, you the 200... The I just, I've asked I him this. I I've asked presume him this to judge on many media forums. The he will not say that the six million Jews finish. of the Holocaust well, are in heaven. Not I wouldn't say presume to judge. Believe it. What right have you got to judge the faith I of I say they're in heaven. Where do you say they are? I know that the only sure way to get to heaven, and I hope you find that way too very soon, is to find Yeshua as the one who came back. See, you, my friend, are a spiritual Nazi. That is exactly my charge. a spiritual Nazi. He has I'm just said, he has just said, he, let, let he has just said that the only way to be saved is by believing in Jesus, meaning that everyone who doesn't is damned. Well, let's, let's just be about this. That is, put words in okay. my mouth. That's, 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 that
we have ignored Richard Harvey. He just said the rabbis ignored him. He said that he's been ignored his whole life. That's what he said in front of these television cameras. But you're he talking comes, to just me a second, right please. now. You can't just a second, deny please. the fact He's coming the after Messiah. us. He comes to our students. He comes to meetings that they organize. They give the students kosher food. Secular students who were never exposed okay. to their Let Andrew Wadman wait, 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 one point. A Christian student right. comes to me at Oxford and says they don't believe in God. I send them to a pastor and I say, you must find fulfillment with your own tradition. They should be doing the same thing and they Brief should respect I think what's so sad about this whole of friction going on here is that Jews and Christians actually have a relationship with each other. As Christians, we wouldn't be Christians if it wasn't for the Jews. We have, uh, we belong to each other. And yet we've got to ask the question, what did God mean when he said to the people of Israel, you will be my people forever? And he made a covenant with Abraham. This is a covenant okay. of land and people Eternally. Andrew Wright, I have to cut you off there. Gentlemen, thank you all very much for coming in this morning. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a good Pam Sunday. Goodbye.